Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra. Thanks for joining me today. In my last video, I showed you that I thrifted three of these cardboard boxes. I think they're really cute and fun, and I'm going to give this one a couple of coats of my DIY chalk paint. I'm also going to go down into the inside of the box, and I'm also going to do the lid. Once both pieces were dry, I glued them together with the lid on the bottom. I thought that would add a little bit of extra character to this box. I'm using some of these new stamps that I got off of Amazon, and I will have the link to these down in my description box, along with a couple of others that I found were really fun. Anyway, I'm going to use some of my black ink and I'm going to stamp a bit of a pattern on this box. You can see that I already have one stamp placed there and now I'm going to go ahead and place the second one. Now with these stamps, you have to make sure that you're really hanging onto it and then with the other hand, you're gonna press it down. So you can see me doing this here. I'm really hanging on with my thumb in the center there and then making sure that I get everything pressed down. Now I did miss a little bit of the butterfly, but you know what? I think that gives it a little bit of age and distressing and I like that look. I'm going to continue by doing the same stamp on the opposite side creating a bit of a pattern. Then I'm going to take another couple of stamps and fill in the spots in between. And this turned out really pretty. I love the effect of this on the box. This same stamp package had this beautiful butterfly. So I'm going to add him a couple of times and then I'm going to take some of my rubber stamps that I picked up at Michael's and I'm going to use the rose stamp because I think this really lends itself to what I'm doing on this project. When you're working with stamps, whether they're the clear ones or the rubber stamps, you wanna make sure that you clean them properly. I like to use a spray stamp cleaner and I like to use this pad. On one side, I spray the cleaner and then I rub the stamp down. And then on the other side, I dry off the stamp. So you can see it has a little bit of foam there from the stamp, but you, then when I lift it up again, it's nice and clean. I'll have all of these products listed in my description box. And just to let you know, I have a title that says my favorite Amazon products. That's down in my description box. Whenever I add some new products, they will be the most recent items on the top. So scroll down all the way down to the bottom and you'll see all of the different products that I love to use when I'm crafting. Now that I had the black stamps all the way around, I felt like the bottom and the top of this box needed a little bit of something. So I'm just taking a makeup sponge and I've got a little bit of black paint on it and I'm just touching around the rim of the lid of the box which of course I said earlier that I glued it onto the bottom and then I'm also going to go along the top rim of the box and that's just going to kind of blend everything together and make it look like it belongs together. Now normally I fill these different arrangements and things when I'm doing florals off camera, but I thought I would just quickly show you how I put all of this together. So I'm just using one of my thrifted floral foams. Now this is for wet florals, but it works the same. So just go ahead and use whatever you can find. Pool noodles are the best, but they're still not available at my dollar stores yet. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for those. But for now, the floral foam will work. I'm just using an old knife to cut them down into pieces and I'm not going to glue any of this because the floral foam is not a good fit with hot glue so I'm just going to shove it right down in there and make it nice and snug. Next I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to snip it into about three inch lengths and then I'm going to make little sort of pins out of them. You working with this type of floral foam or any type of foam, hot glue really doesn't work as I mentioned. So when I do this, I'm going to be able to take that Spanish moss and then just use these as pins to hold it in place. I'm adding a good amount of Spanish moss down on the bottom because I want to be able to cover up that floral foam. And for this design that I'm doing, you're actually going to see all of the Spanish moss. So I want to make sure it's nice and full. And here I am just taking those pins and pushing it in. And this is something that florists do as well, just to be able to hold things in place. 
This is my all-time favorite lavender. Sometimes I find different types at dollar stores or even at Michael's, but when it comes down to it, this is the one I love to use the most. I'm not even going to trim off the stems this time. I'm going to leave the whole bush together and I'm just going to spread it apart a little bit and I'm going to be placing six of them on here. And this turns out absolutely beautiful. You'll have to let me know what you think. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and stick around a while. To those of you who keep coming back every time I upload something new, thank you so much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I found this garden steak windmill last year in the summertime at my dollar store. And I'm just going to take it apart. I'm not going to be using the stakes for it. I just want the top windmill portion. I got a package of these spindles. I got 16 of them for 20 bucks and I thought that was a great buy off of Facebook Marketplace. But what I need to do with this is just cut it down a little wee bit. So I'm just gonna use my miter box and my handsaw and go ahead and trim it down where I want it to be. I use 60 or 80 grit sandpaper a lot when I'm distressing because it makes quick work of getting down to the bare wood if that's what you want to do. And for this project, I definitely do. I want to get a lot of that bare wood showing through. I want this to look really old and weathered and it turned out perfect. My idea for this project is to have the windmill at the top of the spindle. So I'm drilling a hole all the way down through the spindle itself that's a little bit wider than the bolt I'm going to be using. So I'm just using a good amount of pressure here and getting through all the way nice and clean. This is a two by four that I'm gonna use for the base of this windmill. I did drill a hole into this as well, a little bit smaller than the size of screw that I'm using. And I'm making sure that as I screw this in, I leave a little bit on the other side. That's just going to make it easier for me to find the hole on the bottom of the spindle. And then I'll be able to screw these both together. Now I had to do that off screen because of course this is really tall but you can see here what I'm going to attempt to do. The two pieces are together really nice and secure so I'm just going to go around that two by four with some white chalk paint and give it a couple of coats so then I can distress that up a little bit later and it will match the spindle. In between working on the spindle I had taken this outside and given it a couple of coats of flat white spray paint. Now I'm taking a kitchen sponge which seems to be my most favorite way to distress things lately and I'm using some gray paint and I'm just going to be going around the edges a little bit. I want this to look like it's old and weathered and that some of the paint on the edges is starting to come off. Then I just put everything together and it spins. I was so excited that it actually spins. So this would look beautiful on a front porch or in a garden, but I will be keeping this in the house. And since I've got 15 more spindles, I'll be on the hunt for more of these windmill pieces. I'm going to start this project by gluing these two pieces together. This is just a two by four that's been cut square and this is a spindle from a bed. I had already painted it for a different project but now I'm going to repurpose it for this one. I'm using my favorite weld bond glue to glue these together. It holds within about 10 minutes. It needs about 24 hours to cure completely. 
it's really important to prep any pieces that you want to paint, especially if they're shiny. I like to use Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Finish, so I'm going to give this canister one spray all the way around, and that's just going to help my chalk paint grip better. I'll do the lid too. I purchased a new color of paint. This is the Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Sheepskin. It's a creamy white color, it's really pretty. And I got that instead of getting another chiffon cream, which I love, and that's by Rust-Oleum. But I thought I wanted to try something different, and I really love the coverage of the Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. So I will have those listed down in my description box if you're interested in giving those paints a try. I'm going to give the 2x4 and the little spindle piece two coats of the sheepskin paint. Now that the clear matte finish is dry, I can also begin to start painting the canister. Now I'm starting with an up and down brushing motion because I know I'm going to have to do at least two to three coats on this. The stripes and the colors are fairly dark, so I want to make sure I get good coverage. But the reason I'm going up and down is I like to change the direction of my brush strokes with each coat, and that just ensures better coverage. I decided to put a grain sack stripe design on the canister and I've already done one of the thin stripes and I'm just putting the painter's tape on to get ready to paint the second stripe. I'm just using a paintbrush and a very light touch. I'm using a medium gray chalk paint and I'm just gonna make sure that I cover it well the first time. I'm not gonna do two coats so if a little bit of that bottom color shows through, that'll look great. Once I'm done painting, I remove the tape right away because I don't want any of that tape to hang on to the gray paint and then pull it off when it's dry. So it's always a good idea to remove your painter's tape when the paint is still wet. Once the two thin stripes were completely dry, I reapplied the tape and did the thicker stripe in the center. Now I'm taking a small paintbrush and just hand painting number and two with a period in between. And I think that just adds to the farmhouse charm of this canister. If you're not good at doing hand painting, you could definitely use stickers or a Cricut or any rub-on transfers that you can find. I'm just dry brushing a little bit of the sheepskin paint over the lettering and the stripes just so they look a little bit aged as well. I'm also going to be dry brushing the bottom part. I'm going to leave the canister without any dry brushing, but I thought to bring all of the colors together, it would be a good idea to add a little bit of gray to the two x four and the spindle. Now it's time to glue everything together and of course using my weld bond glue one more time I'm going to make sure that I get a decent amount on the spindle and then I'll center it onto my canister and let that set overnight. Did you know there's a bunch of different ways you can support my channel? You can hit that like button. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and they promote my video more when they know it's something you want to see. You can also hit the subscribe button. That helps my channel grow and it also helps my views increase. You could also watch the ads. That's how Google pays me, so I would really appreciate it if you would watch an ad once in a while. And finally, if you want to go that extra step, you can buy me a coffee. I've got a link for that down in my description box. I already redid this chicken canister a while ago, and if you're following me, and watching my videos, you probably remember when I did this. I've decided to remake him one more time because I just really didn't like the gray and the dark colors of him. So I'm using my regular DIY chalk paint in white and I'm gonna give him one coat for now. 
After the first coat was dry, I decided to glue him together. I will never use this as a cookie jar or a canister. I just wanted it to be decor. So I'm using hot glue and I'm going to glue the two pieces together. And then I'm going to take some of my dry decks spackle and fill in the crack so you don't even know that it was there. I like to use a popsicle stick to apply the spackle and my favorite brand to use is Drydex. This is the one that is pink and then when it's white it, you know it's completely dry. I took some of that same medium gray color and a chip brush and just dry brushed all around the chicken bringing out all of those details and I think this looks absolutely amazing. So much better than the dark color it was before. I sure hope you enjoyed my projects today. I really enjoyed making them and I really love how they turned out. True farmhouse decor. Please make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you did like the video. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps support my channel. You can always support my channel also by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.